If you think you know Detroit, you might need to think again. Welcome to Detroit, Michigan, also known as Detroit Rock City, Motor City, the D, and my personal favorite, Motown. Detroit has weathered a lot of challenges and a lot of changes, and it's a really exciting time to visit and see how Detroiters are reimagining and reinventing their city. It's called the Motor City for good reason, and not just because it's the city that put the world on wheels. It's also home to the first mile of concrete highway, the first four-way, three-color traffic light, and the world's first urban freeway. Detroit was the last stop on the Underground Railroad before finding freedom across the water in Canada, and the place where Martin Luther King Jr. first gave his immortal I Have a Dream speech in June 1963, before the March on Washington. I have a dream today. Today, Detroit is a city of breathtaking architecture, colorful murals, jazz clubs and restaurants, and the second largest theater district in the United States, second only to Broadway in New York City. In this video, I'm sharing the best things to see and do in this, I'm gonna pull out every pun in my pocket, this city on the move, the city that keeps on rolling, the city that speeds ahead, the city on wheels, the city that can't be stopped. Just keep watching, okay? The best place for live jazz music in Detroit is the legendary Cliff Bells. The New York Times called it the place to be in Detroit, and I have to say, I agree. Cliff Bell himself was a fascinating guy because after Prohibition began in 1919, he opened one speakeasy after another until he eventually ended up a wanted man on the run in the spring of 1928, and he was eventually arrested, but there was a four-month manhunt. The club has a long history, going back to the 1930s. It did close for about 20 years, and this current incarnation of Cliff Bells has been around since 2006. Many talented artists have taken the very busy stage here. Alex Harding and Organ Nation are playing tonight. You feel the energy as soon as you step inside and you just feel good. And the time flies as fast as the musician's fingers. It's a place that you will definitely want to stay a while. I'm sitting in an alleyway in the former downtown garment district of Detroit. And that's where this alleyway gets its name from. It's called The Belt. And this is an alleyway that has been completely reimagined and conceptualized by a Detroit-based art gallery called the Library Street Collective. Everywhere that you look, you see art. There are places to eat, even the parking lot has art. The Library Street Collective has a gallery here and you'll instantly recognize it from outside because it looks like a fist has just punched a hole through the bricks and they call it the portal. And it's free to go inside and take a look. And next door is the Louis Buell and Co. Gallery. And we had the wonderful opportunity to meet the artist Sarah Nicholson and hear about some of the inspiration behind her work. And I feel like an alley is a place that you'd normally just walk through. And by curating it and adding this incredible art everywhere that you look, it's no longer a place that you just walk through. It's a place that you come to. They've made the belt into a destination. When it comes to architecture, Detroit is a really exciting city because there are so many spectacularly beautiful buildings in a range of different styles. And as you're walking around, it really is so rewarding looking up and seeing little details that you notice on different buildings as you're walking around, especially here in the downtown core. This is the Guardian Building. It's an absolute architectural gem in downtown Detroit. It was built in 1928. Inside and outside are equally stunning. My personal favorite is inside. Walk through the doors and you see this incredible ceiling. It's a blend of Art Deco and Aztec styles. It feels totally unique. And don't miss the Tiffany clock, one of the only Tiffany clocks still working that looks like that in the world. When it comes to newer buildings, you'll want to see the One Campus Martius building. From outside, you'll also see that there's a sculpture by the artist Cause, but make sure that you go inside because they have one of the tallest indoor waterfalls in the world. 
Other favorite stops are the Athletic Club, which is right near Comerica Stadium where the Detroit Tigers play with its amazing sculptures outside of a diver and an eagle, as well as the colorful downtown synagogue. You'll find murals big and small covering surfaces all around Detroit. One of my personal favorites is a gigantic one of Stevie Wonder outside the Music Hall Center for the Performing Arts. It's gotta be one of the best places in the city to take a photo. At Grand Circus Park is the Russell A. Alger Memorial Fountain, as well as the Millennium Bell. The Michigan Soldiers and Sailors Monument commemorates the sailors and soldiers who were killed during the Civil War, and it contains a time capsule which is to be opened on July 23rd in the year 2104. There's a bronze statue downtown sitting atop a 60-ton marble base, and it really has come to be a symbol for the city. This bronze figure behind me is called the Spirit of Detroit Monument, and you can see in one of his hands human figures that represents family, and his other hand that symbolizes the spirit. It's gorgeous, and if you happen to be here at a time when one of Detroit's sport teams is winning, uh, or wins, then come down because apparently they take a huge jersey and put it on the Spirit of Detroit. This building over my shoulder is at the corner of State and Griswold in downtown Detroit. And this is a very historic and important site because before this particular building was here, it was the site of Finney Barn. Seymour Finney was a local man and Finney Barn was a really important station on the Underground Railroad for slaves who were trying to escape across the river to get their freedom in Canada and the barn was a place where they could hide and stay safe until they had a chance to get down to the water and cross to freedom. Whether you join a walking tour or do your own self-guided tour, I really think that exploring the city by foot is the best way to appreciate the city's incredible architecture. This is the Motown Museum. This is where the Motown sound was created between 1959 and 1972. Everyone from Stevie Wonder to Smokey Robinson to Martha and the Vandellas, everybody who has a song that you love was here. Unfortunately, you are not allowed to film inside, but we did take a ton of photos that we can show you. It's such a special experience. You get to see the site where it all started. Barry Gordy, the founder of Motown, once worked on the assembly line at the General Motors facility, and he hated that job. It was not for him. It's not what he was destined for. But on the tour, you learn about how that experience on the assembly line paid huge dividends later in the music and the style that he was creating, all of those hums and taps, the repetition of the assembly line, and also the idea that you know, you start with the, the shell of a car and it goes through a process and all of these different people have their hands on it, doing different things to in the end, you have a fully produced vehicle. He took a similar approach with his artists. Of course, these incredible artists brought something of their own, but he helped to mold them all along the way when they first walk through the doors of this very building from artist development, teaching them stage presence, how to dress, how to behave, all of those things that led them to the artist that walked out back through the door and into the world, onto stages everywhere. And you also get to see the apartment where Barry Gordy lived with his family. You can still see boxes of records to remind you that sometimes they had to pack the records themselves to send them off to their record stores. You also get to see the front desk and the lobby space as it was in the 50s, along with, uh, I love this, a chocolate bar machine where they always had baby roots in it for Stevie Wonder. It cost 10 cents and a lot of the other artists apparently love Stevie and would leave dimes right on top of the machine so that he was never without a dime in order to get a baby Ruth when he needed to power through a session. And at the end of the tour, you go into Studio A, Pittsville, USA Central. You get to see the piano, the drums, and the place where the producers would sit with the window looking down onto the studio floor where so many incredible songs and moments in time and history were recorded. And if you look at the floor, you can see where they were stomping their feet, tapping their toes as they recorded this incredible music and the floor is just worn down over time, which is such a special thing to have in a museum. 
preserved for all of us now to go back and, and see. This is a must if you're in Detroit. Even if you're not in Detroit, this is a reason to come because this is a piece of history. And I absolutely loved it and I really feel that everyone will. This is the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation and I first came here as a kid with my family. I had fantastic memories over the years and I brought Mark back a couple of times, including once on his birthday. So it's a place that I love. It's a massive space. There are nine acres here. They have over 26 million objects in their collections, mostly paper. There's about a million 3D objects and they have about 6% of those millions of objects on display for the public to see at any one time. And they also loan objects all over the world. Fun fact, you can actually eat a meal in the diner behind me, which is exactly what we did on Mark's birthday when we visited. The exhibit of presidential vehicles shows the shifting balance between a president's need to be seen and a president's need to be safe and how that's changed over time. You can see a horse-drawn carriage used by Theodore Roosevelt you can also see the car that President Kennedy was driving in on the streets of Dallas, Texas, when he was assassinated on November 22nd, 1963. This locomotive is the largest object in the museum at 603 and a half tons. And my favorite is that you can actually board the train and go inside and see what the conductor saw when this was on the move on the tracks. Let's go in. Yeah. The driver actually didn't see much. <laughs> no. These are very small. Quite windows. a limited view. Uh, it's hard to imagine what it must have felt like with all that power when this was actually on the move. The 1931 Bugatti Royale is the most expensive item in the museum. There are only seven in existence in the world that we know of. This is a flown replica of the plane that the Wright brothers made history in when they flew it for the very first time. If you look at the floor, you'll see a brass line, and that shows you exactly how far this plane flew. And as you walk along the brass line, you'll see that while they didn't go very far, they didn't go very high, they made history on that first flight in 1903. This is the chair where Abraham Lincoln was seated at the Ford's Theater when he was assassinated in 1865. In 1955, Rosa Parks made history when she refused to give up her seat on this very bus in Montgomery, Alabama. What's less well known is that she later moved to Detroit. You can see her seat and even sit in it yourself. The Dymaxion House was the way of the future as imagined by Buckminster Fuller and it's one of my favorite things to see at the museum. Where I'm Standing was voted the number one museum in the United States. This is the Detroit Institute of Art. It was founded in 1885. It started out at a smaller location, which it quickly outgrew. And this beautiful building that it now resides in opened in 1927. We, however, are standing in a part that is much older. This is one of my favorite parts of the museum that you definitely have to come and see. We are standing in a tower that was actually built in France in the year 1522. It was purchased, taken apart stone by stone, and rebuilt here in Detroit. You can see the beautiful stained glass when you stand inside the tower, but you don't want to miss the view of the tower from outside at Kresge Court, which is absolutely gorgeous. The Detroit Institute of Art has around 65,000 works in over 100 galleries. One of the main attractions here that people come to see is called Rivera Court. And it's a space where Diego Rivera, accompanied by Frida Kahlo, painted in the 1930s. And they lived here in Detroit for that time. And it's a big part of the Diego Frida story. Diego Rivera was known for always putting himself in his works. So if you look up at, to the men with green faces, because they're working with formaldehyde, you can see Diego in a bowler hat. So watch out for him. The DIA is also home to the Center for African American Art. They have a fantastic collection, which you won't want to miss. And some of my favorite pictures from other parts of the collection include portraits by John Singer Sargent. Also, don't miss seeing the Bruegel painting. There's only about 40 in the world, two in the United States, one at the Met in New York, and one here in Detroit. 
This is the monument to Joe Lewis, a native of Detroit, the famous heavyweight boxing champion. This arm and fist punching is 24 feet long and hangs suspended in this bronze pyramid. It weighs over 8,000 pounds and it was a gift to the city of Detroit from Sports Illustrated. This is the rotunda of the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. It's the oldest museum of African American history and up until 2016, it was also the largest. In 2016, the Smithsonian took that title. For me, the most moving part of the museum is the permanent exhibition. It tells the story of people in Africa being brought by boat through the slave trade to America and a lot of it is very immersive. So you walk through a um, darkly lit section where you see the way that people were transported on boats, you hear sounds, it's very confronting. And it continues to chart the story of once people arrived here in America, of the slave trade and moving throughout the United States. The gentleman is a free man and his papers are in order. His bid stands at 20 pounds. It tells stories of the Underground Railroad. I'm going to make it plain for you. When I say get, you go. I'll shoot you dead. You don't do like I say. So make up your mind. Live north or die here. And of course, Detroit was a very important station on the Underground Railroad, so that's a huge part of it with this museum being here in Detroit through the Civil Rights Movement. As you're walking through, you continue the feeling of walking through time, through history. You can see a bar, a barber shop, an appliance store. There's lots of information along the way as you navigate through the museum's exhibition. This museum is a place that everybody should visit, one that I will never forget. I'm so glad that we had the chance to come. In one of Detroit's revamped alleyways, Parker's Alley to be exact, you find Rebel Nell. It's a local jewelry store and it's a business, but it's also a social enterprise. And they create jewelry using repurposed graffiti that has fallen off of buildings. And I didn't know this before, but when the graffiti actually falls off, of course there's the side that you see on the wall, but the other side reveals a different set of colors and textures. And so there's two sides that you can choose from creating this jewelry. And of course you can come here to shop, but they also have a really cool opportunity where you can create your own custom jewelry. You go through all these remnants of different pieces of graffiti and then select exactly the piece that you would like that fits the shape of the jewelry that you've selected. So I was doing a little round gold necklace. So they have a little cutout. You pick exactly the circle, in my case, that you would like, and then they put it into the jewelry making press and set it up so that you push and pull at the same time, gently, gently, until it punctures a hole and reveals the piece that's going to become, in this case, my necklace. Oh, I made jewelry. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> and I just love the story of its founder, Amy Peterson. Back in 2013, Amy was working as a lawyer for the Detroit Tigers, and she lived next to a women's shelter, and she got talking to a lot of the women who lived there, finding out about some of the everyday challenges that they were facing, and she came up with the idea for a business that would also help the women re-enter the workforce, and so Rebel Nell was born. And 100% of the women they've hired have not returned to shelter living. So not only do you get to support a local business and get your creative juices going, but what an amazing way to take home a literal piece of Detroit with you. It truly is one of no other kind. For me, one of the architectural jewels of downtown Detroit is definitely the Book Tower. And this gemstone has been freshly buffed because it sat empty for a very long time and it has been painstakingly and lovingly restored to its former glory. And Architectural Digest actually named it one of the top 11 refurbished hotels in the world. When you walk into the lobby, your eyes are instantly drawn upward into the rotunda that's three stories tall and has a massive art glass dome. The framework is made of brass and cast iron with 6,000 glass panels and 7,000 skylight jewels. 
As you're looking up, you'll notice the plaster ceiling. They actually made molds of the portions that were intact already and recreated the intricate patterns which were then hand painted. Because this was a place that was not in use prior to being now restored, it was a place where you could easily hide things that you didn't want people to find. And there's a fantastic story, well, it's become a fantastic story now, then it wouldn't have been, about a woman who had her purse stolen and whoever stole it decided to stash it here in the building. And as they were going through, they actually found it lodged somewhere in the wall or the ceiling and were able to track down the woman and return her purse to her all of these many, many years later. She had her wallet, she had a photograph of her father, and it's just a lovely full circle moment. There's a lot going on here at the Book Tower. There are residences where people actually live full time. There's also an apartment hotel where you can stay for one night or it's equipped and ready for you to stay for many nights. This is actually where we are staying while we're in Detroit. We have a beautiful room and not just a kitchenette, but a full kitchen with a full size fridge, um, washer, dryer, gas stove, you could really cook up a storm in there. I'm standing right now in what's called the study, which is a working space for residents and hotel guests. There's little private pods, there's meeting rooms, nice big open space. They also have a gym with a fantastic view. There's also a bar called Campers, named after Lewis Camper, the architect of the building. And it has a great terrace that overlooks some of the other beautiful buildings nearby in downtown. There's a French restaurant called Le Supreme, which you can check out our other video if you'd like to see it more about because we did enjoy a meal there. You'll also notice in the lobby, the huge gold clock with three cherubs. It's very hard to miss. And it has a fantastic story as well because someone had the presence of mind to save it because when a building is not occupied, of course, sometimes things do go missing. And the caretaker of the building during that time realized that this was a thing of beauty that was irreplaceable. And so he took it down and hid it somewhere, knowing with faith that this building would one day be restored and so it's really special when you look up now and see it keeping time here in the lobby. If you love history like me, you can come into the lobby of the Book Tower and they have a free exhibition here that tells the story in chapters, <laughs> pardon the pun, of the building and this Washington Boulevard area from the 1900s on. I love architecture and history and having the chance to stay here has been amazing. And I have to say that I have fallen in love head over heels with the book tower. And it's now probably my favorite building in Detroit. There's so much change and growth and renewal and just exciting determined energy happening in Detroit right now. And you really just have to come and see it for yourself. Check out our other videos for more ideas and recommendations for a meal or a beverage. From Detroit style pizza to James Beard award-winning pastries, fine dining to Coney Island hot dogs, speakeasies, jazz clubs, and everything in between, I'm sharing some of the best places to eat and drink in this evolving city. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, which we really hope you did. Subscribe to our channel for lots more travel adventures and thank you so much for your support. We also post lots of different content over on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, so follow us there for more. And I'd love to hear what you think about Detroit. Where in this video would you most like to visit? Leave a comment, let me know. And also, where should we go next in Detroit? Tell me all of your best tips and recommendations. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Oh,